Uh, hi, happy. I was thinking of starting off with a wholesome, wholesome doctor oh, story. Please for do. Us. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I can't believe this it. Is, this, is, this is only for uh, esteemed. Wait, is this going public or is this only for the patrons? This is public. Oh, okay. Yo, look what a treat you guys get. <laughs> I, was, I was thinking of saving this for the for the patrons. Um, how about this? I'll, I'll do I'll do a, a gross thing and I'll do a a, a, a cute thing and balances out. Yeah. So the first one was I had a. Uh, very very uh, nice kid patient. I don't see them very frequently, mm-hmm. but basically I had to, I had to uh, send this kid for for some blood tests. She was maybe five and a half or six mm-hmm. years old, young basically. But she was very nice, very sweet, very um, I don't know, like mature for for mm. you know, like she would sit, she would listen, she would follow orders very well. Um, and in the doctor's office, she wasn't like being fussy or anything, um, wow. which is surprising to see yeah. sometimes. But anyways, then I sent her to for for blood tests, right? And uh, according to the nurses as well, that she, she was fantastic. Um, she took it like a champ, wow. didn't complain or anything. And then afterwards, she came back with her mother into the office, uh, and then she would like steal glasses at me, then look at her mother, steal glasses at me, and then look at her mother, and then she whispered to her mom, she was like, "I want to tell the doctor something." <laughs> 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 oh, and I heard this, and I was like, "Yeah, go right ahead." And the mom was like, "Yeah, he's trustworthy. You can tell him." And she's like, mm, I'm not so sure. I'm like, it's okay, tell me. <laughs> and she's like, it's a secret. You can't tell anybody. Uh, <laughs> I was like, it's all right. I won't tell anybody. <laughs> and then she like, <laughs> she, she shot at me the most triumphant smile. And I was like, I got two two toys from the nurse. <laughs> and then after she yelled at me, she's like, promise you won't tell anybody. I'm like, I won't tell anybody. And now I'm telling the, the, You're the, telling the world hundreds now. of thousands. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, Typical really doctor sweet. can't trust them. That's exactly cute, right. though. Oh, so that was one. Yeah, uh, and another one was uh, I accidentally exploded somebody's toe. You, what? <laughs> Wait, <laughs> uh, <laughs> you go on to hear the story. You know what? I'll save this one. Oh, I'll great. save this one for you. you leave go. me in the dark. Right. Okay, <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Next time when we're all together. Uh, <laughs> but uh, I'll, 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 I'll tell about this. I'll yeah. tell you about my Homer Simpson patient. Yeah. Um, okay, please. <laughs> uh, I mean, this is more fucked up, actually. So it's a, a guy who walks in, uh, and he is incredibly yellow. Okay. So he's jaundiced, basically. Yeah. Um, and uh, usually, of course, like there's a there's a uh, unsurprising there's a reason to why the fuck he's jaundiced. Um, but this guy has been jaundiced for like two weeks, and he's just like, eh, you know what? I thought it would go away, and it didn't go away. Um, so Jeez. finally he came in. I was like, all right. I looked at him. I checked him out and everything. Um, and he had like, uh, I asked a question. And it's like one red flag check. I'm like, oh, okay. Then I ask another question. I do some investigations. It's like, check, check, check. It's all the red flags uh. are being checked. I'm like, yeah, my guy, we're going to have to do some some further investigations. Uh, it turns out that this guy, alhamdulillah, got very lucky. Uh, he came in um, with just diffuse yellowness in the skin. Uh, and it turned out to be a head of the pancreas tumor as well as uh, colorectal cancer. Um, so this guy had the uh, double whammy, two for one. Wow! Um, he got operated like on the spot, basically, and now he's fine. Alhamdulillah. Oh, um, that's yeah, nice. Yeah. I thought it was gonna be some yeah, horrific exactly. story. <laughs> no, 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 no. Exactly. No. Wow. Uh, so okay, explain to me jaundice, because I know babies often get mm. jaundice when when they're yeah. super young. Like Evie was had yeah. slight. She had to go. Um, we had get to, like, phototherapy, right? Yeah, we didn't even have to do that. They said maybe she'd have to, okay. but we just kind of sat in the sun with her and stuff like that, and that yeah, was fine. That was I didn't know adults yeah, yeah. could get it too. Yeah, yeah. John, this happens as a result of uh, the buildup of something called bilirubin mm-hmm. uh, in the blood, and then afterwards it gets deposited in different parts of the body. Um, this is a byproduct of a red blood cell breakdown, uh, and the liver is the one that's supposed to clear it out. Mm-hmm. Um, you can have either prehepatic, intrahepatic, or posthepatic reasons uh, for buildup of bilirubin uh, in the body, which can then result in, in jaundice. Um, if you have this guy's example was post-hepatic basically it w- there was no block behind the liver there was no block within the liver something wrong with the liver itself there's something that was happening right after the liver processing basically uh. which caused this backup in the system and that happened to be two tumors um, that are blocking the Jeez. pathways yeah so um, I imagine mm-hmm. like if you're an alcoholic or something and your liver has less function yeah. this is more likely yeah, yeah exactly right okay. yeah. certain infections alcoholism uh, tumors <laughs> or other things stones can mm-hmm. cause this as well but, Every day, uh, new horrors was... for me to look forward to. <laughs> <laughs> exactly right. Hey, you know what? I don't know what to tell you. Don't drink. Yeah. <laughs> Good thing you guys let me. Don't drink. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not common that it's a weird tumor, uh, but yeah. So, uh, and I'll save the exploding toe for next time. Yeah. Wherever Hugo is right now, he's tingling. <laughs> he's like, oh, that doctor, he's saying something about the alcohol. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, our sweet little piggies. It's been a while. This is a, a real light episode. It's just two of us today. It's just your boy, Hakeem, mm. and your boy, yeah. me. 
<laughs> we're gonna <laughs> we had a originally this was gonna be a guest episode with a, a returning favorite whom we shall not name mm. um but uh due to some scheduling errors some daylight savings stuff um not gonna happen today so we thought we would inaugurate <laughs> a, a <laughs> it's not a deep program it's, it's not <laughs> yeah. it's not an episode if it's not uh, if we don't have immense some scheduling, scheduling error yeah i uh, swear the number of episodes that have been derailed or postponed or, or otherwise canceled yeah. because we've yeah. we've goofed with scheduling yeah well uh, this is why we have you go but anyway mm. we're going to inaugurate <laughs> a new format or a new recurring series Called viewer mailbag, or sorry, listener mailbag. You can't see us. Um, <laughs> that's that's for the high tier patrons only. Um, mm. Basically, what we've wanted to do for a while is solicit questions, comments, uh, lovingly crafted poems about Ugopnik's feet from you, exactly. our dear listeners. Um, so I shot over a, a message to the Discord last night. And uh, <laughs> boy, if y'all didn't come through, I tell you what, we've got a lot of messages to go through. So we're gonna, a we're lot going to, to, to. <laughs> yeah, honestly, <laughs> we're gonna, we're gonna gently caress our bulging sack of listener mm. mail that is mm. that is fit to bust with with lovely messages from you all. <laughs> okay. so let's let's begin, shall oh we? Let's dive mm. right in. Um, I'm gonna have to give the very first one because. They got they got the first message, even though it's not particularly long uh, or thought provoking. The message is, "JT, you're cute. Thank you, thank you. It's true." <laughs> uh, mm. From of course, this name is called Bedonver the Unpronounceable, and they're living up to their <laughs> <laughs> living up to their name. But the next uh, piece of mail, I I am very interested in this too. And the question is, when are we getting the cookbook? Okay, this is something that is. Uh... You know, I keep adding recipes to to a like I have a preliminary list. Um, nice. But the thing is that the concept that we want to go with, at least, is the concept that I have, um, is that I want it to be like kind of stories of our life mixed with some theory bits, historical mm-hmm. tidbits, and the recipe. So I want it to be actually something that you don't actually need to write, or excuse me, you don't you don't actually need to make the dishes mm. in question. You can actually sit with this book and read it. But also, I would like for it to be proper dishes that are made. But then we're gonna have to get like a proper food photographer to take really nice photos of the kind of dishes and that means we're gonna need to cook the fucking things mm-hmm. and none of us are in the same place <laughs> so <laughs> these logistical issues are kind of in the way um but i generally i cannot wait um at first i was thinking of having a stupid like naming convention where it's like uh, alliteration mm. like crunch that kebabs or something like that <laughs> St- stupid shit like this but i don't know it's a little it's a little cringe yeah <laughs> we can we can do better than that uh we'll see but the the stories of one's life plus like historical tidbits and some theory yeah. bit and then a recipe to go with it is is, is pretty neat i think that sounds awesome because that's something that you know the average listener could enjoy regardless of whether they like cooking or not you could just stay for the stories yeah. the tidbits the stuff like that the pretty pictures um oh hakeem touched this rice that kind of thing <laughs> 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 just leave it open on their bedside oh, table <laughs> yeah exactly right well there you go gang we we don't have an eta but it it's in the works it's in the works mm. and we will be sure to announce it uh when hakeem's special cookbook is ready Maybe we'll make it a Patreon yeah. thing. Who knows? We'll see. That would be so much fun. We could do a Patreon, uh, like a Patreon thing where uh, uh, you'd be on camera and uh-huh. it's basically me and you go off camera yelling at you on how to make the stuff. <laughs> <laughs> and we say we give you like time limits. Oh my <laughs> like, God. Like That's a master torture. Chef. <laughs> Why do you people torture me? I'm the one who has to play the bad games. I'm the one who has to, to cook the food that I've never Habibi. seen before in my life. <laughs> Habibi, it's okay. It's all right. It's because you're such a sweet soul. I, I'm sure you do a fantastic job, Habibi. You're like, uh, uh, get the dates. What is a date? <laughs> 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 oh, I knew it would be filmed. Into- oh my god, that'd be so good. That would be oh, a blast. The people listening, let us know. Let us know if that's something you'd like. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell Hakeem how else you can he, he can torture me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, let's see. Next, uh, let me open. I should have brought a piece of paper so I could crinkle it and make it sound like we're opening letters. All right. Mm. Would love to see an episode discussing the history of socialism and queer people. I know one liberal argument against socialism is how queer people were supposedly mistreated in Cuba and the USSR. Maybe even have a queer guest on. Love you guys. Star eyes heart. Mm. And that was hearted 10 mm. times. So <laughs> there seems to be a consensus that this is a an interesting topic to people. Um, um, any preliminary we'll, thoughts? We'll definitely look into it. We'll look into it. Uh, we'd have to get the right kind of guest and whatnot for it. Like with uh, all our topics, right? Mm-hmm. Um, we have to write, get the right person. We also need to make sure that the timing works. We need to make sure that all of us... It's, all, it's scheduling. It's always fucking It's scheduling. always scheduling. But another thing is <laughs> yeah, obviously sure. as three straight dudes, uh, we want to yeah. make sure that we're not talking about a mostly, subject that we are not straight. 
Yeah, 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 true. Yeah, we have with you know with an asterisk there. There's an exception, a single or two exceptions for each of us. But you know, you know what we mean. We we want to make sure we do the topic justice, and that means finding yeah. someone who's properly qualified to speak on the subject, both historically and through their own lived experiences. But yeah, that's something we yeah. definitely like to pursue. Here we have a suggestion from Gordy. Oh, I didn't write, I read the other person's name. That was BTR. Thank you, BTR, with the kind of scary looking fox PFP. Uh, Gordy says, <laughs> my suggestion, at around the three-fifths mark, hmm, okay, sus already, three-fifths, why? Mm. Um, yeah. <laughs> take a couple minutes to just chat about something completely unrelated to communism, politics, world events that you feel like talking about. Not for any particular reason, I just think the listeners might like to know how you're doing or if you've read any good books lately or anything. You can get back to the important shit later, I just want to recommend you throw in a quick detour for pacing. Yeah, I think we're pretty. We already kind of go on tangents uh, yeah. quite often. We we, do, we have a lot of our banter right up front, which for some yeah. reason people some people tend to skip, which drives me nuts. That's the that's part yeah. of our charm. That's why you people yeah. love us. At least it's my favorite you. part, honestly. Yeah, the banter is great. <laughs> yeah. But uh, yeah. but yeah, we'll try to um, maybe insert some of that and at various points in the in the episodes as well when it fits. Um, obviously, if we're doing a lecture or something, maybe it, it won't particularly fit in that episode. Hmm. But yeah, um, while we're talking about it. Let's see, what what have I been reading? I've still been reading my way through The Expanse. There are nine books, and they're long, and I'm a slow reader. Um, <laughs> but, I, but I quite enjoy it. I like sci-fi. Next up on my list is probably Contact. Contact is good. I've seen the movie probably three or four times. I've never read the book, um, so that one is probably next on my list. Uh, Recommendation-wise, definitely check out Three-Body Problem if you haven't already. It is coming to Netflix. Yeah, by the time this this episode's out for wide release, it might be out. I forget. I think it's the 21st or something like that. Um, but it's also been adapted uh, by a Chinese um, film studio, so I'm not sure what the what the difference will be. That was a while back. I'm sure the visual effects on the Netflix one are going to be good, and I think it's made by the Game of Thrones people. I don't know. Anyway, I digress. Mm. Read Three Body <laughs> Problem. It's a good series. Hakeem, what about you? Uh, I, I'm i sorry. I'm going to disappoint you with my answer. I've read... Uh... Uh, one of uh, Kagerlitsky's books, uh, From <laughs> Empires to Imperialism. Um, the subtitle is The State and Rise of Bourgeois Civilization. Um, it's a very big book and very boring. It's like 400 pages. Wow. Uh, I do not recommend. Absolutely do not recommend. <laughs> it's a very ambitious work. Um, and as a result of it being very ambitious, it's just fucking... Yeah, I mean, it's a slog. Yeah. It's a slog to get through. Um, and by the way, I, I came out of it. I don't feel like I've really benefited. Oh, wow. Wow. <laughs> yeah. Harsh yeah. words from from Dr. Hakim, who will read anything. Exactly. How do you do that, no, by exactly. the way? How do you get through books that are kind of boring but I important? hate myself. <laughs> okay, got it. <laughs> <laughs> I just, I just, do you know what? Uh, I basically treat it like homework. It's like I yeah. have to do a certain amount of pages today. That's okay, probably well, a good some... approach, honestly. Where was it? I had something else. Fuck no! I I deleted I deleted the file. Never mind. Rip. There's another book I read recently, but I don't even remember the. And you title hated it that I, much. You just deleted yeah, the PDF. Exactly. <laughs> there's a, there's a 1984 book on on Gaddafi that's actually very good that I recently read um, for an upcoming uh, little video thing. Not mm. um, quick. But uh, yeah, it, it was impossible to find a, a what's it called a uh, PDF copy copy online. Um, mm. There's an archive like link for it or something. Um, but uh, yeah, I found like the one. Uh, hardback copy that's still available online and somehow it was like two dollars or something <laughs> i don't know why but i ordered it and it finally arrived um and it's, it's a pretty good read that's our boy hakeem you can always count on hakeem to be reading something cool all right next question is from kukadacha something like that hmm. any plans for an episode on the zapatistas or mexico in general also have y'all tried their coffee Zapatista's the coffee or Mexican coffee? M Mexican coffee, I can, I can imagine. I was going to say, probably not. Um, <laughs> uh, no, I, the thing is, I don't drink coffee. I am a sensitive little boy. Um, I don't really? like, yeah, I, I can't do coffee. I can't do tea. I can't do beer. I can't, you can't do, do tea. wine. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, no, beer and wine, like, this is good. These are good things to not have, but I mean, tea, wine. Yeah. Well, I, I've tried a number of, of different kinds. I've tried the typical American iced tea. Mm. I've tried like a, what Kelsey likes, which is like a British style tea with lots of milk mm -hmm. and stuff. I've tried Chinese stuff um, in like, we have those, oh, what do they call them? Tivana, maybe something like that. There are mm. those, those mm. you know, stores in the mall that have a bunch of different kinds of tea. I tried a couple there. Yeah. Really hated mm. those. Yeah. Um, mm. I don't know. I just don't like the planty bitter taste. So I'm gonna, really? I'm gonna, I'm gonna rely okay. on you to introduce me to, to your go-to. Sure. We'll I'll see. Make, I'll, I'll make, I'll make you some good stuff. I'll All make right. you some. Don't worry. 
you need to be introduced into the world of cardamom. Uh, as for the question about the Zapatistas or Mexico in general, it's kind of same as before. Um, since none of us are particularly well-versed on the subject, we're going to want to make sure we have someone who can speak on the issue. Also, I'm learning Spanish. I, I would love to be able to talk to people in their, their native tongue. <laughs> I'm, I'm tired of being the last person on the, on the pod who can't do that. So uh, <laughs> we'll, get there. we'll get there eventually. Um, let's see. Scrolling for, for more mail. Gently fondling my sack for another message. Uh, there we go. Who doesn't love it when JT fondles his sack? <laughs> I'd love an episode where you guys talk about the ways in which y'all engage in praxis and the best ways for listeners to get involved in their local areas. So I don't know that it's really worth a, a full episode because it, it really varies on where you live and what's available mm. in your area. But the, yeah. the, the you know, quote unquote, best way always, regardless of where you live, is just to find what orgs are in your area and reach yeah, out. Exactly. Right. That's pretty much it. I mean, like for me, the CPUSA has a like a, hey, get in, get in contact form and they'll they'll reach out mm. to you because they don't want you to like you know just show up at a meeting and, and assume you're gonna be like a wrecker or a fed or something mm -hmm. so I, I when i was looking at joining some kind of org i submitted a form to the cpusa it's basically just hey what's your name why do you want to get involved what's your email slash phone number and i sent that off mm. and then within like 24 hours somebody gave me a call um with a little you know cursory hey how you doing why do you want to get involved and that was that and then they added me to the slack and the rest is history and that's pretty much how it goes with all of those uh dsa is a little bit more lax with the their vetting process you can just go to meetings and stuff so whatever whatever is available in your area it'll it'll depend on what country you're in uh if you have access to a large city but like here even here in texas like there's north texas dsa cpusa psl we have pretty much everything so odds are you have at least one org in your area but yeah, that's mm. that's pretty much it. Just reach out; they'll get they'll get in contact with you. That and also, there's a dedicated podcast episode on this. I made a video on this. You made mm. a video on like there there we have we've still spoken on the topic. Funnily enough, yeah, I'm about to make another video on the subject. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I've got a I've I've been clipping um, comments that are well, this is great and all, but what's the solution or mm. what do we do? I'm like okay, yeah. I guess I guess I'm gonna make what we about to do with the video. So. <laughs> <laughs> How do you um, Oh, here's one from another one from Badon for the unpronounceable. Mm. JT, how sick did you get when you went on that half as interesting crime spree thing? Give us some deets. Okay, so for those who aren't aware, I was the um, DP for some of uh, Sam from Wendover's stuff, um, some of his documentaries, and the first uh, half as interesting crime spree episode where we just traveled and, and committed like minuscule crimes, the like, goofy crimes that different states have. Mm. And I, we went to... We had just flown into Portland, I believe, and we went to get lunch at a Jersey Mike's, you know, good, reliable Jersey Mike's, the sandwich place for those of you who aren't aware. Um, and I got my usual. I got an Italian sandwich and we got back in the car after eating and not seven minutes later, I started getting oh, dizzy. No. I started getting really oh. hot. I was like, oh no. And so, you know, <laughs> come an hour down the line. I had to get Sam to pull over in a parking lot while he was like trying to break some silly law. And I just sat on the curb with my head in my hands and I tried not to, to vomit my guts out until we got back to the hotel. I got back mm. to the hotel. I drew the blinds. I was shaking, shivering, clammy. And yeah, I was, I got so food poisoned then. And funnily enough, I've gotten food poisoning on every trip I've done for that man. So I think he's trying to kill me. Um, <laughs> so after that, I just started traveling with like protein bars and stuff. I'm like, I'm not going to eat anything. I'm just going to eat these bars. Mm. Um, yeah. it was bad. It wasn't as bad as coming back from a wedding in Zimbabwe where I got COVID and ended up in a hospital in Qatar for, <laughs> for three days. <laughs> that oh was, God. that was the sickest I've ever been. I did not see the light at the end of the tunnel there. Um, Jesus Christ. Yeah. I've had a rough go of it with travel recently. But yeah, yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You're healthy and good. But please, like, watch out. I don't know. You need to get your, like, immunoglobulins checked or something. I know. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> There's something wrong with my tum-tum. No, yeah, no, the, the, what's it called? The food poisoning, that you can't help. There's some fucking ancient cheese that was yeah. served to you. <laughs> yeah. The foot lettuce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, fucking hell. <laughs> Oh, please, could you please do the fight? No, no, no I won't force you. <laughs> All right, we'll continue. Okay. We'll continue. Right. Uh, we've got one from Ila Revolución Pa' Cuando. 
Uh, this one says, best dicking down I ever got, I got from the guy who introduced me to this podcast. So thanks for that. <laughs> You're very welcome. Yeah. We yeah, love to absolutely. hear it. We love to hear mm. it. Next one from Aware. Aware? I don't know. Any advice on researching certain topics? I struggle to navigate Google Scholar and whatnot to find credible sources. This is a Hakeem thing. Do you use the scholarly stuff? Yeah, sometimes, but like, this is the thing. Um, Routledge publishes almost all the, like, if you're looking for historical stuff. Um, otherwise, there's most definitely a JSTOR link to, like, JSTOR mm-hmm. uh, link to the, the topic that you want to cover. Uh, and then you just get the DOI, and then you go to, like, Sci-Hub and paste it in, and then you'll get the, the, the full article without having, well, like, you'll bypass paywalls and whatnot. That's how I usually do it. Um, otherwise, yeah, Google Scholar works. Um, uh, most of it is informed um, guessing. Like I know a certain work or book or something that loosely covers the topic, and then I'll go and look through their bibliography, and then you'll find good shit. Mm. Um, but this, this this is a very roundabout way. Google is your best friend, honestly. Depend. J- just try to narrow your searches down. And Sci-Hub, that's the one with the the raven or the crow or whatever in the key. Exactly right. Yeah, yeah. And yeah, that's exactly they right. have to keep moving domains, right? Because they keep trying to get taken exactly down. Exactly right. How do yeah, you yeah, find them? The, you just type in Sci-Hub, and then there's going to be somebody who, who maintains a uh, mirror website okay. uh, where they're going to have like six different links, and one of them will work. Okay. <laughs> Libgen is the same thing. <laughs> one of them will eventually work. Um, so yeah, I think I bookmarked like 17 of, the, of their iterations at this point. Oh, wow. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. There you go. Well, hopefully that is helpful. I uh, Most of the time... I just straight up don't use credible sources. Like I'll go for stuff that's common knowledge and then Mm. I'll just emotional attack it up. (laughs) And that's, Mm. that's how it goes. But usually also video, I just pull videos and stuff like that. I'm not, Mm. most of the time people aren't going to be convinced by citations in my experience. Um, Though there are some people who would be interested in the citations and that is where the benefit of having them comes in, I think. Um, Mm. So yeah, Godspeed finding, finding good sources. From C Brown 117, I think a segment of y'all sharing your methods for coping with everything going on would be appreciated by a lot of people. Yeah, everyone has their own coping methods, but I think the best one generally is touching grass. Like just, you know, yeah. log off. Um, it sounds cheesy, but that is the thing that has helped me the absolute most. Like I used to be pretty tied to my phone because, you know, my job is internet, much like Ken's yeah. job is beach. I just like, <laughs> I'm on my phone all the time. I'm researching, I'm bookmarking mm-hmm. things to use in videos. And so I was like, okay, if I'm not working, I'm going to turn my phone off or I'm going to put it in the other room or, you know, something like that. I'm not going to, I'm going to go for a walk and take a, a notebook with me. So if something comes to mind, I'll write it down in the notebook, but I don't have Twitter to distract me, things like that. And just like looking around, it's amazing. I, I don't know why this might sound strange, but as I'm, if I'm driving around, like yesterday I was driving home and there's like a little median with a stop sign on it in a little patch of grass. And I'm like, huh, I wonder how many people have stood on that patch of grass. Like just, you know, mm. think about things that aren't awful. The internet, like think of, just look around, say, oh, that tree looks, I wonder how old that tree is. You know, I wonder if anyone's ever rolled that big rock over there. You know, just mm-hmm. be curious about the things that are in your vicinity, that are around you. And, you know, let your mind wander in that kind of capacity as much as you can you'll be amazed the, the your brain's ability to kind of reset and get healthier after just a little bit of, of disconnecting from the evil that is the internet. At least that's what <laughs> I do. Uh, I agree. Yeah, touch grass, uh, exercise, try to eat well, uh, worship God, and be thankful. That's what you need in life. <laughs> Otherwise... <laughs> yeah, I regret to inform everyone that uh, being physically healthy to the best of your ability does indeed make an improvement. <laughs> Much no, to my, much ah, to my the fucking dissolving it. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, when I'm, I slipped a disc in my neck last year. Oh my god. And yeah, that was really How? bad. How? What? What are you doing? What the, I was, what the I fuck? Was, I was, You're like my patients. I know. I was lifting heavy, and I, I wasn't focusing as much on form as I should have. And uh, oh uh, you better believe I'm never gonna do that again. Um, yeah, Jesus Christ. You rehabbed it out, right? Yeah, it's pretty much, it's, okay. it's pretty much fixed now. Like if I'm doing the dishes, okay. just like looking down at a particular angle and holding my arms out at a particular angle and for whatever reason it's only when I'm doing the dishes I'll still get some tingling in my shoulder blade Uh, area but like uh, just so I've been doing light stuff like you know push ups (laughs) uh, Indian clubs um, 
What? Habibi. Yeah. No, I'm, just, I'm sorry to inform you, but you're going to be 62 one day. I know. And this fucking thing's going to come back with a vengeance. It's never going to go away fully. So, yeah, oh be God. careful. You know, work out uh, to the best of your ability. You know, yeah. we're not saying go be a power lifter or anything. Just, you know, go for a walk. Go for a jog. Go for a swim. Um, pick up some one-pound Indian clubs and do some mobility work. That really helps. Uh, things like that. It's just, it's it's good for you physically. It's good for you mentally. You will be amazed how much of a better headspace you're in uh, just just after a week of going for a 10-minute walk every day. Yeah, exactly right. Bodyweight stuff is the best, generally. Um, it's not the best for building a particular... I mean, no, you can build a fantastic physique that way, mm-hmm. um, but you have to be very diligent with it. Um, mm-hmm. It's better to go and do like targeted uh, workouts, compound movements, and then targeted machine work. Um, but uh, body work is the kind of stuff that you will have a lot of difficulty hurting yourself doing. Yeah, so. yeah. Low injury right. risk. So very important as you get old and decrepit <laughs> like me. <laughs> okay. Exactly right. All right. <laughs> Scrolling. Uh, we've got a poem as requested about Ugopnik from John mm. Wilkes Booth Babe. Roses are red, Marxism is neat. The people demand Ugopnik feet. Thank you for your exactly contribution, right. John Wilkes Booth Babe. <laughs> you know he's gonna go you know he'll do it, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he's gonna do it on stream, foot stream yeah, for, oh for Palestine. Oh my God! And then we're gonna break the hundred thousand uh, <laughs> yeah. uh, barrier. Jesus Christ! Let's see. Uh, Let me find another one here. Okay, here's Gordy again, a uh, little baby comrade. I'm personally still a bit on the fence about like everything. I'm comfortable calling myself a leftist, but I'm not sure I'm into Marxism Leninism, mostly because I'm not into democratic centralism or the concept of a vanguard party, but that's neither here nor there. Having a handy guide on how to find reliable resources on the questions I have rather than just coming onto the Discord and asking random people for their input would be lovely. Hakeem, what would you say is the Mass best line. Yeah, yeah, is the best <laughs> the, TLDR the ma- book to read? <laughs> Uh, it's not a book. There's a dictionary, online dictionary. Um, it's titled Massline, M-A-S-S-L-I-N-E. It's a Marxist Linus Maoist resource. So, like, I mean, if that'll affect your, you know, but they they put evidence for all their, uh, what's it called, um, definitions. So you look, you can look up a particular topic and uh, it'll have a very nice little summary, uh, explanations, and then other sourcing. What's nice with it as well is that it's continuously being added to. Other than that, though, like, there is an older... Soviet book. Oh, I don't remember the name of it, but it's it was translated into English, and basically, it's uh, the concept is um, questions and answers kind of thing. Oh. Um, but it still doesn't cover all of the things they they release them, by the way, in several volumes as well. Uh, very interesting thing. I'll find it one day. Uh, again, I remember I read through it, and it's a very neat like um, primer. Uh, Intro, yeah, a primer book. I, I, I was surprised that they did that because the Soviets will publish stuff like that, but they also publish like the uh, intro to Marxism Leninism, which is a uh, the, the condensed version is six hundred pages, My and it's one of the most fucking <laughs> dry academic works you can ever <laughs> read. Um, to the point, by the way, the what's it called? Because it was, uh, I, I believe, the second version or the third version was released during Khrushchev's time, uh, and uh, the. U.S. Congress wanted to get like a summary of it or something, mm-hmm. um, so they had <laughs> they made some poor professors get together and oh. make like a forty-two page summary, and they're just complaining the entire time. <laughs> 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 it's, it's, it's actually kind of cute. That's um, but, yeah. fun. I have it printed somewhere. Um, I, I compiled it and printed it myself somewhere in my the six hundred page wall. one. Yeah. yeah. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> Habibi, oh, why are you printing this <laughs> at the poor print shop? Hey, do you know? Oh my, dude, I, I, do you know what I did? Oh my god, they'll kill me if they find out. But it's, it has been years. Um, in in my university, you used to be able to get like tokens for printing, uh, uh, basically whatever you wanted. But it's supposed to be for uh, notes, like lecture notes and stuff. And uh-huh. what I would do is I would go around to all the people who never use their tokens and be like, "Hey, give it to me." <laughs> so I take their tokens and then I would use university resources to, to print, print books. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, oh shit, here God. comes the token goblin. <laughs> <laughs> and I used to do that. I used to use the, the comically large uh, stapler that they have <laughs> in every fucking library. And I'd just be stapling all these binders together. Oh, my God. Oh, um, you're a menace. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I loved it. I loved. It. I, I'd finish up their ink, and then I'd just be like, "Ah, well, you know, <laughs> get to work, pal. <laughs> I got the tokens." Uh, Excuse yeah. me, you guys are out of ink again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh my god, fucking! <laughs> so yeah, it was something that I, I made good use of at the time, and that's what you got to be resourceful when it comes to this kind of stuff. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Uh, next up was Nate four three one three. 
Could each of you give one nonfiction and one fiction book recommendation? Would love to hear what you're all reading. Okay. Uh, kind of did this earlier. My recommendation would be Three Body Problem. Really, really good Chinese author. It won some awards in China, so it's got some, some street cred. Um, even though the first bit of the first book does read a little anti-communist, um, if you can kind of hold your nose at that and get through it, at least that, you know, at least the author knows what he's talking about. Like he used terminology correctly. It wasn't super, um, super liberal. Um, it's just very critical of the cultural revolution at the beginning of the first book. Um, as for nonfiction, what have I read most recently? I haven't read much nonfiction recently at all. <laughs> Stay blessed. Yeah, <laughs> your honestly, skin, yeah. <laughs> your yeah. skin is this perfect. This is part of my <laughs> self-help routine. <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't know. Read read uh, On Practice, Non-Contradiction. Those are fun. Like, I mm. always recommend State and Revolution because it's nice and short and funny, like mm. genuinely funny. Mm. But Mao's good, too. Like, he's a, he was a, yeah, he was a yeah, funny boy. He's a, fun, yeah, he's a fantastic writer, too. Very easy to get through. Yeah. From, from my side, I would say a my favorite fiction. Uh, it's not my favorite, but it's one of them. It's definitely up there. Uh, Kafka's work. Particularly, um, ah. uh, the penal colony. Fuck, I can't speak. <laughs> penal colony, <laughs> penis colony. Yes, <laughs> yeah. the penis colony is the, is the one that. Yeah, I uh, highly recommend it. It's fantastic uh, work. But then read all all the rest of, of Kafka stuff. He's uh, I don't know. There's like a, a weird vibe about it. Like you're you're slightly uncomfortable, but it's just very so pleasant to read. Um, like where so, the yeah. dude turns into a bug. Yeah, exactly. Metamorphosis. Exactly right. Well, the hunger artist sucks. I don't like the hunger artist. Um, but a bunch of us, uh, all the rest of his stuff is pretty good. Um, that's number one. Uh, as for nonfiction, um, I remember this is a book I read recently. Um, actually, two books. I'll recommend two. How about that? Carlos Martinez's book on China is very good. I think he called it the red, the, the East is still red. I mm, think. Yeah. Uh, very, very, very interesting. Um, uh, conceptualization of China as a socialist state still um, like of course there's some stuff there that's you know you can disagree with but it's a good book I'd recommend it that's number one number two is um, God Save the USSR by I need to I need to God Save the USSR hold on who was the person Jeff Eden yes um, it's a very it's an incredibly good work um, based on you research and you um, basically uh, what's it called uh, uh the place where they keep the fucking archives, records. archives, <laughs> archive. Thank you. I mean, <laughs> yeah, yeah. A new archive research, but basically, it uh, goes into how uh, prior to World War Two and through World War Two, various religious communities managed to integrate themselves into the Soviet system that was really against them uh, through being like hyper patriotic essentially hmm. um very very interesting concept and by the way by the way completely demolishes the idea that oh you know the soviet man and how religion was done away it's completely yeah. like it was the most superficial layer on top of uh, like you know uh state enforced atheism and then all the, the grounds underneath are basically people who were religious just under just like under the tsar just uh manifested differently and then it went right back to you know yeah. what it was after the dissolution of the soviet union so yeah but both are fantastic works highly recommend them uh, next up, we've got Leon, favorite non-anime cartoon. Literally anything. <laughs> <laughs> Any, anything yeah. besides anime. No, um, I, Over the Garden Wall was quite good. I like Adventure Time. That's fun. Really like Avatar The Last Airbender. I grew up watching that, so it's very nostalgic for me. Um, oh, bro, SpongeBob. Oh, okay, it's gotta be SpongeBob. It's gotta be SpongeBob. <laughs> Have you heard the, the Arabic SpongeBob song? No, I haven't. Is it, oh does my it slap? God, I know. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the slap. I need to. I need to send it to you sometime. I'll put it. We'll in the, I'll we'll put it in the episode. All I know is, is in French, he's Bob Leponge. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> I, I can't imagine what he is in Hungarian. <laughs> <laughs> mm, let me see. Favorite non-anime cartoon. Dude, I'm. Uh, you're talking to an Arab man. All we watch was anime. We're like we're like Latinos. <laughs> oh yeah, how are you guys doing with the yeah. uh, with the loss of uh, the Goku artist? Oh uh, yeah, exactly. Yeah, no, it's a day of mourning all across. 
Um, you know what? I've never been the biggest fan of Dragon Ball Z, but I know plenty of people are. Um, I just feel bad for for Mexico right now, or just yeah. all Latin, Latin America. It is a, a black day. Um, yeah. Did you see the cartels had a, had a ceasefire for a while? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> fuck i mean hey he did he did good even death why not yeah but yeah Dude, don't you, the, the, the the japanese government sent like a not a cease and desist but basically uh please don't stop pirating officially pirating wow. uh our, our our stuff to to the mexican government because they're doing uh, uh like street viewings that were drawing crowds of like tens of thousands of people <laughs> of Dragon wow. Ball Z. <laughs> yeah, one of the finale had a, it was done in like a stadium, and there was tens of thousands of people. There's video, photo, uh, there's a photo evidence of That's this. It's amazing. the most insane shit. Yeah. yeah, I saw I saw a video on Twitter the other day of um, this little town in rural Mexico where they were putting on like a parade in honor of the guy's death, mm. and everyone was dressed up as Dragon mm. Ball characters, and they had like dances mm. and stuff. It was very sweet. <laughs> Yeah, my God. Rest in peace. May he rest in peace. Uh, I, I'm not gonna say non anime. I'm just gonna say anime because I'm sorry. Uh, I don't have a, a thing. <laughs> when I was a kid, I loved. And I still do to to, uh, to today. Uh, it's uh, Detective Conan. I absolutely love that shit. Mm. Um, I love how he'd solve the cases. I I love how he'd shoot the the watch thing and make his uncle uh, fall asleep. Uh, it's been years since I've watched it. That and Hunter X Hunter I remember was also fantastic. My understanding of anime is so limited. I've I've watched a couple episodes of Naruto. I watched mm. some Rurouni Kenshin and uh, <laughs> Yu Yu Hakusho on Toonami as a kid, and that's it. Yeah, Dude, um, yeah maybe Shonen is not your not not your taste, man. Maybe maybe the the, the fighting stuff is not the right. Yeah, because uh, then then I, I'm I'm certain there's some stuff that you absolutely love. Um, All right, we'll we'll get yeah. together and cook some stuff and have some tea and watch watch the sort <laughs> of anime. You... I mean, then I'll probably I'll kill myself because you... I don't like tea <laughs> and I don't like anime. Uh. Uh, I'll make you watch the absolute worst. I'll make you. Watch... <laughs> oh my god! I'll make you watch Book in a Pico or something. Um, I don't even. I don't even know what that what... is. I don't. It's it's a it's a meme. It's it's known for being bad. I think it's. I actually have. I've never seen it personally. I just know it's a meme for known for being bad. Mm. Uh, let the people tell us in the comments. Yeah, it's, it's gonna be. It's gonna turn out to be messed up. Uh, I'm sure. Wonderful. Um, okay, here's a question from Monarch. How effective do y'all think what you do is? Like, does all of this stuff have a noticeable effect on the political climate of whatever country? Uh, short answer, no, not really. Um, I think, you know, everyone listening to this is listening to this because we've kind of made a difference. We've maybe changed their opinion or they already had some inkling of leftist beliefs. And there are a lot of, you know, there are a couple thousand people in this server at least. So, hmm. you know, on a personal level, sure, yeah, we can probably have some effect on people's lives and those people can go on and, and change other minds. But mm. I will never say that what we do is like, quote unquote, important as praxis. This is first and foremost entertainment, um, educational yeah. entertainment. But the only thing really that will make a difference is you going out and getting involved. So we're like, maybe step mm. one, we can kind of give you a nudge into doing something that matters. But, you know, that's my opinion. Mm. I, I completely agree. This is, um, Hugo has a fantastic analogy of um, in, in the revolution where the people put up the posters. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> this is agit propaganda. This is what this is. And educational and mostly just for fun. Um, that being said, though, on an individual level, yeah. And I think it's kind of um, the, the reverberating effects of what we do will eventually reach and uh, allow for some sort of material uh, action, something mm -hmm, actually mm -hmm. like actual praxis. Um, but this is not something we're doing. We're just helping inspire other people or, you know, help them in their journey when it comes to this sort of stuff. But yeah. don't, you know, don't fall into the pitfall of thinking that being online is where practice is done. No, this is, you're trying to spread information at the, at the very best. Mm -hmm. And, you know, everything helps. So we're not like, mm. we're not saying we're detracting from the movement. We're not saying what we do is completely useless, but like on the, the tier list of, of what's most effective, you know, we're enjoyable, but we're not, we're not the top. Moving on, let's see. From Ramen Noddles, what are some of your guys' <laughs> favorite bands? Um, I'm interested. Yeah, top of the list for me has always been Arctic Monkeys. I love everything they've done. Um, all of their different sounds are very interesting to me. Um, other than that, I like jazz. Um, you know the you like jazz. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. You know, st like stereotypical stuff, big band stuff, um, mm. Louis Armstrong, stuff like that, Ella Fitzgerald. Uh, <laughs> I can't believe they got Seinfeld to be the fucking B. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. Sorry. Sorry. Go on. Um, other than that, it just varies by time. I most of the time I'm just like listening to lo-fi or synthwave these days, just because I don't feel like putting going to the 
effort of selecting an album to put on and stuff mm. like that. But if I do put on an album, it'll likely be Arctic Monkeys or maybe Two Door Cinema Club, something like that. For me, um, it really depends. It depends on what kind of mood I'm in. I like a lot of uh, like city pop kind of stuff. Um, I like uh, Mocha Toma and more, you know, this post punky kind of uh, music as well. Um, uh, more, I guess, high energy music, sewer slot stuff like that. I enjoy also lo-fi stuff. Uh, Nujabez or Nujabez or however the fuck people say mm-hmm. the name. Um, the Japanese artist who died, uh, tragically. Yeah. Um, but yeah, um, that kind of like hip hop on lo-fi beat type stuff is very, very, um, it's smooth, easy listening. Mm-hmm. I feel. Right? Yeah. It doesn't matter. You can be grocery shopping. You can be driving to work. You can be whatever, and it will just uh, it fits the mood. Otherwise, plenty of Arabic music, mostly um, Umkathum. <laughs> Hold on, here's a great one. Uh, AJKM Curator says, can you all give us a deal plan to remove French from the planet? <laughs> why, did, why did you skip over this fine Because comment, I knew JT. this would be three hours long with you with your detailed red string plans. <laughs> okay, exactly right. You know what? I'll just say one thing. Take away the baguettes, all right? That's the first step. Oh, remove and baguettes. And then they'll disperse. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> remove, exactly, remove baguettes. And then we shall have the, the, the greater uh, French uh, sea. Uh, <laughs> and no land connection b- between between spain and and germany gonna go with the comically large (laughs) saw a la bugs bunny exactly (laughs) exactly right and then just float it into the ocean yeah well it'll be like a (laughs) an inbred atlantis all right (laughs) i'm sorry i'm sorry i'm sorry okay Okay, let's see um benji says is hugo a curd yes he is (laughs) (laughs) and he's not here to defend himself of course exactly right have you seen that meme where it's like adam adam smith wrote a letter to Karl marx asking him are you a curd marx never replied (laughs) 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 oh my god we we need to change that and say and just write are you albanian send it to you yeah um (laughs) Krishna R says, thank you for making my friends hate me for never shutting up about theory. Hey. Much love to you guys. Much love to you right back, Habibi. I blame Hakeem for that one. He's the one who's always recommending amazing books. Hey. <laughs> Sometimes it's amazing. Sometimes it's just straight up, yeah, I, I, I hate myself and I hate the people listening, so here you go. <laughs> Have some just absolute, you know. Dense. Oh, my God. Yeah. Jesus Christ. Like honey. Like cold honey to sift through. Fucking hell. If y'all, uh, this is Spice Head says, if y'all can give a shout out to Waco PSL, my sister would appreciate it. Um, shout out to Waco PSL, I guess. Hey. Uh, also, what's uh, also what sort of action should socialists take in response to the recent racist migrant laws? Ask your local uh, organizations; they'll probably have a better line on this than we could because we don't know the local uh, yeah. the specifics of, of, of it. Uh, but there's almost always um, the nice thing about uh, relatively stable bourgeois societies is that you can use a law against them to a certain extent. Mm. Um, so if you're just very good with that, you can get pretty far actually. Uh, but otherwise, just the usual uh, agitation, education, organization. That's what you need to do. Mm-hmm. All right. I have fantastic, fantastic editions for you, Heavy B. Oh, let's hear it. Bass Frog, Bass, Bass Frog has a poem for us. He says, There once was a man from Yugoslavia, a lover of booze, even Arkea. His co-host requested a verse of so sweet that prompted the reader to ponder his feet. <laughs> <laughs> Though countries once united, they tread. By mighty and great Tito where they led. In many continents, they have stepped. So perfect men stared and babies wept. The great Yugoplings' feet, even Musk would retweet. <laughs> Leaves with steps to a better world for us all um so that was his and uh, that was based frog and then john wilkes booth babe who had the previous one uh was disappointed by the fact that this one was better than his so he came back he hit back all right, all right. this is a a tupac versus a biggie type of situation okay <laughs> so john, john wilkes booth babe says uh and he added you go up and he says which one do you prefer if you say base frog we're going to travel back in time and kill tito if you like mine uh, mine i'll travel to redact it and remove all taxes on booze <laughs> so here it is there once was a man named jt whose toe cheese was so tasty he tried to deflect with you request but his hogs are not so hasty <laughs> That doesn't even make and sense. He, <laughs> and then he fall, and then he followed up with a with a haiku. JT has some quite nice toast to nibble on, but he won't allow us. There we go. <laughs> now we're talking. <laughs> uh, I'm glad. I'm glad people are keeping my feet out of this. <laughs> I'm gonna let me count those syllables. JT has some quite nice toast to nibble on, but he won't allow us. Yep. All right. That checks out. Well done. Yeah. See. There we go. Okay. Yeah. No. Somebody kind of included me. Uh, it was my mayhem, uh, and in the end, he basically says, or excuse me, they basically say he keeps them safe, he keeps them clean, he sa- he saves them for Hakeem. Uh, <laughs> thank you for that. <laughs> Very nice, and objectively mm. true. Objectively true. Yeah. A mining comrade, what is an appropriate vodka to drink when Trump wins this election in November? <laughs> uh, I like the when Trump wins. Honestly, probably the case. <laughs> um, there is only one correct answer to this, is and that is Tito's from Austin, Texas. Tito's is my favorite vodka. Um, better than all that European shit. 
Uh, get mm. you get you a, a Tito's citrus. Oh, it's delicious. Mix that with a little strawberry puree, a little bit of lemonade. You have a delicious fruity summer beverage. Perfect for drowning your sorrow. <laughs> and like <laughs> probably a little bit of cognitive dissonance because you're happy he's back because it's, you're going to get a lot of good memes, but terrified that he's back because you're probably going to get executed or deported. So, you know, drink to drink to both. <laughs> mm. Exactly right. Uh, Rydrich, we're common Vindal. That's I'm sure that's Welsh. Yeah, uh, and I pronounced it wrong. He says, "My question is, what is your favorite language that you can't speak aesthetically?" Um, he says that he used to speak Welsh, but now instead he, since he speaks it, uh, he'd rather Arabic or Scottish uh, Gaelic. Hmm. How about you, JT? Favorite language you cannot speak? I don't. I don't know. I can't technically speak Spanish yet, and I've always liked the cadence mm. of Spanish. Um. I, Latin American I, though. Latin American, yes. Yeah, um, specifically, I like the Sp- I. I'm coming around on the Spain Spanish with the Barcelona kind of thing. Yeah, it's kind of oh, really kind of cute in its own way, and the, some of the differences. But I do prefer a good strong cerveza versus cerveza mm-hmm. or whatever it is. Mm. So, what about you? Uh, let's see. I don't know. I think it's it's really sounds stupid and cliche, but either Russian or Chinese. Um, also Spanish. Sometimes I go back for, back and forth on Farsi as well, but mm. like, eh. Speaking of not being yeah. able to speak Chinese, have you seen that video of the, there's like a Chinese convenience store clerk and some, Amer- I think some American kids, like one big American kid and one, like uh, some skinny one. And the Chinese guy was like giving them a toast, I believe, in Chinese and having them repeat mm. it back. And they, they were just yelling back <laughs> at their best attempt at the Chinese. <laughs> It's so, <laughs> no, it's, I have not it's seen this. Very wholesome as they toast with their Gatorade or whatever it is. <laughs> oh, very cute. Yeah. I can't wait to see it. No, it's plenty. Sadly, it's too many languages to learn and not yeah. nearly enough time. My favorite pastime is freaking you. You go out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, with how much oh, you understand man. of his language. Yeah, yeah, yeah. exactly. Yeah. Uh, let's see. Uh, Diego says, "Which would one? Well, actually, oh, fuck. That's not. Which would one would be?" The- <laughs> <laughs> Which one would be the most effective? You wrote it wrong. Uh, by the following, JT having to spend 40 hours every week either working at Best Buy or watching anime. Uh, okay. <laughs> Yugo only having access to plastic American vodka bottles and no music anywhere over a low to medium volume. <laughs> or Hakeem only being allowed one cup of tea if he spends at least two hours of the day conversing in French. <laughs> <laughs> I, think, I think that's the cruelest, that last one. Yeah, um, exactly right. Yugopnik... He's a he's a, a snob with his vodka, but he'd be okay mm. with the plastic. Yeah. Uh, as for the la- the music volume, that would probably get to him a little bit more. For me, mm. I would pick working at Best Buy for forty hours rather than watching forty hours of anime. Uh, <laughs> I think I it makes me so intensely uncomfortable. I'll yeah. make it a full time job for you. You're gonna have to go and clock in <laughs> eight hours a day. You get a lunch break, but otherwise you're gonna have to just watch anime. That's your <laughs> oh god. That's what you get the wage for. That's okay. You'll get you'll get some Avatar Air, Last Airbender as a treat. Hey, Into. thank you. <laughs> <Have it be. laughs> Anti sent a very nice large personal anecdote. We'll read his TLDR. Um, although the rest of it is very nice. He said, it's a long story, mostly me yapping, but my mom had both good and bad experiences with socialist Poland, but after the dissolution of the USSR, she left Poland to first to study in England, then to Australia, where she met my father working in a fucking casino of all places. Huh. Both parents are relatively pro-socialist, but more sock than me. Listening to a podcast has let me explore not only my own, uh, my own politics, but my family's history. I was your top uh, 0.5% of wow. listeners last year, according to Spotify, so it's safe to say I love the work all three of you do. Hakeem, happy Ramadan. Happy Ramadan, Kareem. Thank you very much. You go up next, uh, I'm going to clip your large RPS and GT. <laughs> I'm going to destroy you with my mono black vampire command. No. You're going to get <laughs> sucked dry. And then he says, wait. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Oh, that was very sweet. We Take appreciate that. it. That's a very wholesome message. Mm. I'm tr- sitting here. We're trying to figure out who your mono black vampire commander could be. Is the, is the commander mono black as well? Hmm. Now you'll have to tell me who it is in the, uh, just ping me and let me know. I'd be, I'd be curious to see what you're running in your deck. <laughs> Uh-huh. Biomaster says, is there any kind of timeline or idea when you sweet folks can finally manifest somewhere together physically? Mm. That's to say, when when are you pilgriming to the nuke? <laughs> <laughs> Honestly, it's like, a, again, it's a, a lot of uh, logistics issues, but also it's a paperwork in that case. Yeah. Right. Uh, we're three different parts of the world, so we're going to have to find a place where it would be easiest for all of us to meet. And most likely that will not be in the United States, at least on my end. Um, yeah. So, yeah. We've got sadly. we've got some tentative plans. We'll see. We'll let mm, you guys know if, uh, if we make it happen. Yeah. 
you'll get some special content i'm sure you'll you'll get some feet <laughs> all three of our feet in one one photo since you people That's don't appear on camera it's gonna be me taking that picture like a selfie and with like mm. I, my friends are here too laughing just outside of frame <laughs> <laughs> that, be. that one no, guy whatever his name not. is we got a we have a prophetic vision from magna wongo last night i had a dream and at one point after having been pro Oh, it must have been proselytized to about not putting socks in the washing machine. I found myself in a sort of recording studio. It reminded me of the lodge from Twin Peaks. There was some equipment in there, but more importantly, JT was sitting there in his Volvo in the middle of the room, turning the steering wheel from side to side while making car noises to himself. You got Nick wasn't there, sadly. As for Akeem, I couldn't see him anywhere, but I knew he was there. I felt his presence. <laughs> <laughs> Menacingly in the walls or on yeah, the bed. <laughs> just watching. That's a, a little bit eerie dream, very backroomsy. Um, but I'm I'm glad you experienced our, our <laughs> JT going room room <laughs> vroom, ding, 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 ding. <laughs> <laughs> going wee 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 wee. Glad you experienced that, friend. Oh, Thank you God. for sharing. If uh, by the way, once the stupid fucking Volvo is done, goddamn. I know. If if the next uh, the the first episode after it's done, if it doesn't start with you revving that engine oh, to yeah. the max, all right, then oh I'm gonna send it right back to the don't <laughs> to you the shop. worry. I'm gonna I'm oh. gonna put my microphone right up close to the tailpipe. I'm gonna get you some beauty shots. Oh, you be, you better Please. believe it. I can't wait. All right, Colin says, I know Hakim does some fasting based on some comments he's made in some of the older episodes. As a fellow faster who has done intermittent fasting in OMAD for a while and also some multi-day fast so i was just wondering if he would be going to if he could go into his routine a little bit is it purely for religious reasons or are there health lifestyle choices that play a part do you take any supplements during it like electrolytes etc um the, the fasting i do is mostly just for religious purposes um i have done some intermittent fasting before uh, but now i prefer to eat at a slight caloric surplus and get enough protein to maintain muscle mass instead uh, when working out, then afterwards, then just maintenance. Um, but otherwise, yeah, my fasts are religious really fasts. As for routines, I don't really have any. Um, the Islamic routine is that uh, you wake up right before the Fajr prayer, so that's the dawn prayer uh, for something called sahur, which is basically you getting up to eat uh, right before that and drink enough water. Um, and usually it's just a few dates, some yogurt and water. And then afterwards you go to bed again after you pray and then you wake up for your day, day proper. Um, so then that means I go to work, uh, I work a full shift, you know, and then I come home in the evening and then by the Maghrib prayer, which is the sundown prayer, basically, um, I can eat again. I don't really do anything specific. I don't take and take any electrolytes or vitamins. I take some supplementation regularly, but not as a result of fasting. It's just to supplement right hmm. um but yeah but nothing really specific uh i would say that i would do but the hamdun i'm otherwise healthy and i don't take any medications uh, otherwise nice. there would be no, some some like uh, adjustments that would be that would need to be made yeah i've been doing the intermittent fasting for a while and i like it quite well um it was a little bit tough to to get used to in america we do a lot of breakfast mm. usually um but i've never mm. been a big breakfast person so that was made it a little bit easier for me so i'll typically not eat lunch until one o'clock something like that and it's been good. It's been helped me keep a good, healthy weight and energy level. Um, yeah, so I would I'd recommend it for anybody who's trying to lose a few calories from their for their daily intake. That's a very easy way to do it once you get the hang of it. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And also the mental clarity you get is unparalleled. Yeah. Um, just fasting in general. It's not just intermittent fast. Just fasting in general. Uh, like a few hours into it, you get this like clearness of the mind. Um, if you suffer from like this weird brain fog, particularly after you eat, um, it's a fantastic. A little like change in the routine mm. um but yeah some people don't get it at all though so it's a all, all of this is individual here we've got one from pine cat they say just want to say thanks for being a great podcast and helping me get motivated in community work it's been awesome getting involved locally and not feeling like the only socialist on the planet of the internet that's awesome mm. thank you for that message pine cat we do love to hear that people are actually getting involved because of our work um i know that's very mm. rewarding speaking personally um there's nothing like actually going and meeting with people IRL finding a yeah. local problem and seeing what you can do to, to help uh, no it, yeah but you make friends man yeah. it's like it's against the touching grass thing it's you you feel part of something bigger a community blah blah, mm -hmm. blah. it's very nice mm, it really is uh, they follow up with a recommendation. Also, please consider reading the manga, manga excuse me, manga, Fool Night. Mm. It's a new take on dystopian story with a focus on climate change and class struggles. Although only 30 chapters have been translated to English, I'm working on the rest, and the official English translation for Volume 1 should be coming out this month. Well, Very cool. That does sound cool, but I tell you what, I'm not about to read a book backwards. 
<laughs> Fucking hell. <laughs> Dude, what about us, huh? What, what about... <laughs> y- y'all are... I don't know what y'all are doing over there. <laughs> it don't make no sense. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I'm so teasing, cute. of course. I might give it a try. Uh, that sounds uh, interesting. Um, let's see. Big Boy Slim says, Hello to my lovely fellows. I have a question for our physician. Hey, uh, do you have any book recommendations on medicine and healthcare from a Marxist perspective? Blessings upon blessings for y'all. Hi, baby. Thank you. Likewise. Um, not really. There's... um. Uh, there's a book titled Red Medicine from like the 30s about Soviet healthcare, and there's a f- many studies done, like uh, or not studies, but like academic work on Soviet healthcare and Chinese healthcare and Cuban healthcare, etc., etc., Vietnamese too. Uh, which, by the way, is not like it's okay. Uh, it's pretty actually pretty good, but it's not as good as you'd expect of a socialist nation. But that's for a variety of reasons. We we can get to that at a different point. Um, but sadly, none not that I can think of. The, uh, what's his name? Guevara was working actually on a book hmm. uh, called uh, about being basically being a revolutionary doctor, blah blah, blah when he was in Guatemala. Uh, but he got like a few chapters in, and then he wrote a letter to his mom. He was like, it was just a, a lot of poetic, basically fluff. Uh, mm. So he decided to not finish it, which is a shame. Um, I'm sure maybe those notes are somewhere in it with his family. I, by the way, I'm going to say this again. I've said mentioned it before, but I'll say it again. I know that his wife loves him, uh, Alayda Marsh. I'm, I, I know that she loves him. Uh, but her censoring his diaries yeah. by removing basically any time he talks about other women is a little bit like on the... <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a little, you know, right... Um, like she keeps everything else everything is intact but whenever he mentions anything about any other woman all of a sudden <laughs> this needs to be taken out a, a, bit, a little bit of a duty to, to you know yeah. give that to the people but she is his, she is his wife I, as well I do like, understand I yeah yeah uh, Amy says, thank you all for the pod. It's hard to openly read at my job. So podcast videos, audiobooks help me get through some of my labor. Uh, and the podcast has a great balance of informative and insightful content, but also enough banter and humor to cut the gravitas of anything socialists touch. <laughs> I really do appreciate that. Thank you very much. We really appreciate that. That's what we tried to do with this to keep it kind of semi-interesting at the very least. And then eventually, you know, on occasion do something silly and, and yeah. just mindless like this, this episode today, especially after coming off the back of more serious stuff. Yeah. Right. Yeah, we like to have a good mix. I think that helps it be a little bit more digestible. Um, we love all of our, our comrades out there making, you know, proper theory-heavy podcasts and stuff. Uh, but it'll you get a little bit burned out on those sometimes, so we want to try to be a, yeah. a bit of a, you know, offer something just a little bit different, a little bit more um, warm and fuzzy to welcome our little piggies. Exactly right. <laughs> they also say also random thought that came up JT since you played DK and Smash I had a weird image of you cargo throw holding you go slash uh, <laughs> that's very wholesome anyone who plays Smash yeah somebody draw that for <laughs> us I would love to see that alright well that's the whole list uh, of, of of mailbag we've we've emptied our sack for the day yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> JT has, has buzzed <laughs> oh my god thank you all for your for your lovely messages uh, questions, anecdotes, poems about feet. Truly, mm. this is uh, has been <laughs> one of one of the days of our life. I must say. Yeah. So, <laughs> we, uh, if you like this, please do let us know. We'll make sure to announce a little bit further ahead of time uh, next time. In the so, future, yeah, yeah, so that you guys have more time to to submit stories or fan fiction or assorted smut about Yugopnik and Hakim. Mm. Uh, we right. would love to read it. Um, thank you all for being. Uh, you wonderful people. Thank you especially to our beautiful patrons without whom we could not do what we do. Thank you from the bottom of our dirty little commie hearts. Um, mm-hmm. You are the best. Mwah, mwah. With all that being said, this has been The Deprogram. I'm JT. I'm right, Akeem. And Yugopnik is probably here in spirit. Uh, you can imagine him with his, <laughs> with his little, little hogs out. <laughs> and we'll see you next time. <laughs>